Welcome, this is Dr. Amanda Rockinson Zapku, and in this tutorial, we are going to overview the assumptions needed for a one-way MANOVA. In order for a MANOVA to be robust, certain assumptions that underlie it need to be met. There are two assumptions that need to be considered when designing the research. First, assumption one is, is that you should have independence of observation, which means that there is no relationship between the cases in each group or between the groups themselves. This should really be taken into consideration, as I said, when designing the research study. Assumption two has to do with sample size. Again, this is another important issue when designing the research or that you consider when designing the research. You need to have an adequate sample size based on research and statistical recommendations. Most research texts suggest sample sizes for the chosen research design. For example, Galgal and Borg recommends a minimum of 15 to 30 for, for a causal comparative and experimental designs. However, in addition to considering what research textbooks say, it's also important to consider formulas such as Cohen's that take into consideration statistical power. Now, the remaining assumptions, starting with assumption three, need to be tested after the data is collected. Assu the third assumption is, is that there is no extreme univariate outliers and there is univariate normality. For each dependent variable, you, you will need to create a box plot to ensure that there are no univariate outliers, and more specifically, no univariate extreme outliers. Then there's univariate normality. The univariate normality assumption assumes that the distributions for the dependent variables are normal. You can check for normality in a number of ways. You can create histograms or conduct normality tests such as Shapiro-Wilkes or Kilmogornoff-Smirnoff tests. On histograms, if you choose to do those, normality is assumed when there is a symmetrical bell-shaped curve. For the normality test, non-significant results, a significance level of more than 0.05, indicates tenability of this assumption. That is, normality can be assumed. This is checked for, remember, each grouping variable and each dependent variable. However, I will note here that the MANOVA is reasonably robust to modest violations of normality when the sample size is at least 20 in each cell. Tabaknik and Fidel tell us this. The exception, however, is when normality is affected by outliers. Now let's take a look at assumption four. Assumption four is that there is multivariate normality, which is really based on univariate normality. But what we're really going to test here is that there are no extreme multivariate outliers. Now, this assumption is examined by this test here, Malahalanopis distance. The data's Malahalanopis distance values are compared against a critical value outlined in, chi in the chi-square critical value chart found in a lot of statistical text. If the critical value on the chart is ex ex exceeded um, or that the if the data value exceeds the critical chart value, then the assumption, the assumption is not tenable. If it's below the critical value, then it's tenable. Now assumption five is, the, is linearity, or there is a linear relationship between the dependent variables for each group of the independent variable. This is examined by using a scatter plot or scatter plot, plot matrices. The presence of a straight line on the scatter plot indicates that linearity can be assumed. However, a curvier linear line uh, that curves around on the scatter plot would indicate that this assumption is not tenable. Assumption six is that there is no multicollinearity or singularity. These assumptions can be checked by creating a correlation, correlation matrix for the dependent variables, or examining Pearson's R for the the relate, examining Pearson's R. Uh, so doing a Pearson's R analysis between the dependent variables. Now, a MANOVA is most robust when the dependent variables are moderately correlated or multi moderately associated. 
When correlations or associations are low and not significant, really you have singularity then and separate univariate analysis need to be run. Conversely, there's the issue of multicollinearity, and this is when the correlation coefficient values between the dependent variables are significant, and they're significantly high. Most textbooks like Warner and Tabachnik and Fidel say above a 0.8 or 0.9. When multicollinearity exists, it's preferable to either collapse the variables into a single measure or only analyze one variable. More information can be found about this in statistical text. So as I said, for multicollinearity, we use correlation matrices. Now, for assumption 7, assumption 7 is that there is homogeneity of variance, covariance, and also that there's homogeneity of variance. Now, the assumption of homogeneity of variance covariance is assessed using boxes M. In SPSS, this is actually can be um, selected as part of the MANOVA output. A significance level for a boxes M that's larger than 0.05 indicates that equal variance can be assumed. A significance level of less than 0.05 or 0 0.001 means, depending on what textbook you look at, means that the variance covariance cannot be assumed uh, and that the assumption is not tenable. Then there's the assumption of homogeneity of variance, and this is Levine's test. This assumption assumes, as I said, Levine's test, this assumption assumes that the population distribution of the dependent variables have the or of the two groups have the same variance. Let me say that again. The assumption of homogeneity of variance assumes that the population distributions have the same variance. If this assumption is violated, what it means is the averaging of the two variances is really futile. It's, there's no point in doing the ANOVA or the, the two ANOVAs. So um, if it is violated, you can use a modified statistical procedure and uh, when um, the separate ANOVAs are performed. So remember, in the first tutorial I talked about, we do the MANOVA and then we do two individual ANOVAs if the ANOVA is significant. Really, Levine's has more to do with assessing, or has to do with the ANOVAs rather than the MANOVAs. Um, and so anyway, when you're performing the two ANOVAs, you can use an alternative, uh, more of a non-parametric test like Welsh's or Brown's force to, to look at um, the ANOVA results. They're more robust than the traditional ANOVA. Now, you evaluate the variance uh, or homogeneity of variance, as I said, using Levine's test. In SPSS, this is uh, also part of the MANOVA output. So you can run it and you can choose to run the Levine's test for both of your dependent variables when you're actually going through the process um, of running the MANOVA. In this, and so you'll have two Levine's tests, one for each dependent variable. If a significant, if the significance level of either Levine's test is larger than 0.05, it indicates that equal variance can be assumed. However, if the significance level is less than 0.05, this means that variance cannot be assumed and that this assumption is not tenable. Now, I said that Levine's can be run, or is run for both dependent variables separately. So it is possible that it could, that Levine's could be, or the assumption of homogeneity of variance could be tenable for one dependent variable, but not the other. We're gonna take a in-depth look at each of these assumptions in the upcoming tutorials.